We are in the 13th of Jizit, and here there is a lot going on about believers, a lot going on about... There's a lot of metaphor here. There's a lot of direct instruction. Um, there's a lot going on about where, what is the next life for the believer? What is the next life for the non-believer? And what does that look like? And how can we reach it? So if we start, if we start with the very end of Surat Yusuf, we began, we finished up yesterday in the middle of Surat Yusuf. And we see that this ends, this story is going to end in a very positive, optimistic, beautiful way. Uh, Nabi Yusuf has his, uh, his, he, he, his father who is so broken hearted that his eyes have gone blind with sadness, finds Yusuf again. I mean, this it's just great happiness at the end of that surah. And so to not dwell on that surah, because we talked a lot about it yesterday, we see Yusuf in all of his trials of betrayal and difficulty. And then even the trial of power, because that's a trial too. Like if you are in charge of something, that's a trial. How responsible will you be? How will you act? Will you act with leadership? Will you act with vision? Will you act with gratefulness and goodness and kindness and service and understanding? And will you do the hard things and the things that take courage? He certainly did the hard thing and very intelligent, strategic thing in his interacting with his brothers. And the result was a very positive, optimistic look at the way the world can be. And from there, we go into Surat al-Ra'd. Now, Surat al-Ra'd brings us right into, continues us, in this optimism. I'm just going to make sure I have my English up so that I can, so that I don't have to translate. Okay, Surat so al-Rad brings us right into the, this, the, the, the best and most beautiful optimism, which is the beauty of guidance and Jannah. So Alif Lam Ra, تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ وَالَّذِي أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقُّ وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ These are the verses of the book and what has been revealed to you from your Lord is the truth, but most of the people do not believe. And so here we have the beautiful optimism that we have truth. Truth is, is everything. When you have truth, you don't have confusion. One of the points of anxiety and stress in the world today is we don't have truth. We don't have truth. And then, but the verse I was talking about when I was talking before, Allah, it is Allah who has erected the heavens without pillars that you can see. He established himself above the throne and made subject the sun and the moon, each running its course for specified time. He arranges each matter. He details the signs that you may have the meeting with your Lord be certain. All of this confidence in, in who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, that he is the powerful and he knows everything. And now everything, everything. Then there's a list of things until we get to verse 8. Where Allah knows what every female carries. Female, untha here is, uh, it's, it's, it's untha. It's not even about human beings. So like it can be uh, a cat. Allah knows what the cat, the cat mother is carrying. And what the wombs lose and what they increase in or exceed. And everything with Allah is in, is, in, is in good measure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows even about the womb. And this is something that is, it's visually very important, but it's also something that is a real miracle for the human being. Because even today, with all of the science that we have, all of the science that we have that gives us so much information about the womb, 
so much information and so early we know if a woman is pregnant or not and so early we can do an ultrasound and see the baby still there is there is mystery and there is unknown when it comes to the womb and the miracle of the womb is that it is a parable of this life or one of the miracles of the womb is that it is a parable of this life that if you look at our life the living life that we have now we come into this life through birth we go out of this life through death okay and the middle part is life and this is where messengers come to us in the womb we go into that life through conception and the blowing of the spirit into the body and we go out of that life through birth and so we think of birth as this happy occasion and death as a sad occasion but actually it's not the case because both birth and death are the same. They're the same. They're the moving of the soul from one stage to another stage, equally real. And so when the soul, which has occupied the body, is born, then we are in this world. And then when the soul, which is now occupying the body, will leave the body, now we are occupying the next world. But the soul continues on. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in describing his power to us in this verse, it's very, it's big. This is what every female carries. How many women in the world wonder if they're pregnant? I mean, this is the thing with women. It, you just, you're, I, I don't know how many times I wondered if I was pregnant and I, and I sometimes worried and sometimes was excited and sometimes wished and some, you know, all of these things. Alhamdulillah, I have three children. I had six uh, pregnancies. And uh, I would have loved to have had more. SubhanAllah. This is Qadr. Qadr. Allah, alhamdulillah. But Allah knew. Allah knew. Everything that was going on in my own womb. And everything that's going on in every woman's. Even as she herself questions about her own body. Even as she herself doesn't know. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, this is, this is Allah, who we are to have taqwa of, who we are to be growing our taqwa of in this month. And as we continue on, and we move now to verse 14, I have marked here that I wanted to share. Ah, Yes. This comes back, <laughs> well, okay, but subhanAllah. But, so, but I mean, you had that I'm pregnant look. SubhanAllah. Uh, here in this uh, verse 14, لَهُ دَعْوَةُ الْحَقِّ وَالَّذِينِ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُونَ لَهُمْ بِشَيْءٍ This verse is about truth. To him alone is the supplication of truth. And those they call upon besides him do not respond to them with a thing. Except as one who stretches his hands toward water, calling for it to reach its mouth. Come, come water, come water. But it will not reach. مَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي الضَّلَالِ The supplication of the disbeliever is not but an error. So if someone is calling out to what is not true, we, we should not feel threatened by that. We should feel only empowered that we have the capacity and the capability to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَدَعَوَةُ الْحَقِّ Da'wah of truth. We should be certain of that. And know that everything worships Allah. That's the next verse. Everything, everything worships Allah. I, I often give this example, so some of you will have heard this before. But my exa if you have you ever if you've ever been or heard a symphony orchestra. Uh, it sound, it's an amazing sort of human miracle that it sounds like one instrument with many different, uh, many different layers. 
But if you go to a fourth grade orchestra and you listen to the children there, it sounds like 25 different instruments all playing by themselves. And in a way, the... Um, I, inshallah, Sonia, I hope I remember. Maybe remind me around 729. The If we think about that symphony orchestra in the world, the whole world is like that symphony orchestra. The whole entire world. The plants and the animals and the the uh, even the viruses. Everything in this world is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَشْجُدُ مَا مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ تَوْعًا وَكَرْحًا وَظِلَالُهُمْ بِالْغَدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ سبحان الله الحمد لله He prostrates whoever is within the heavens and the earth willingly or by compulsion and their shadows as well in the mornings and in the afternoons Everything Everything is that symphony orchestra It's a beautiful orchestra beautiful music of praise and glorification of Allah in the world the human being is the fourth grade violinist. We come in, we're not praising Allah. So our, our, our instrument, if you accept the metaphor, isn't tuned. And so as the rest of the world is praising Allah, we come in and go, Arr! and it's jarring. It's truly jarring. And what we want to be is we want to be part of this symphony part of the symphony of praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you go then in the same surah to verse 28, the result of that, if we can become part of that beautiful symphony of praise and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can become الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّوا قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ those who believed and whose hearts are assured, are calm, tatma'in. Tatma'in is to be calm, to be assured, to have sakina, to be to have confidence and calmness together. Qulubuhum bi dhikrillah. That is the dhikr of Allah that calms our hearts. Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'in al qulub. Unquestionably is how the translation is here. Or it is only by the dhikr of Allah, that hearts will rest assured. And so on this path of, of becoming, on this path of becoming, we want to become of those who have hearts that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hearts that are calmed by that dhikr, calmed by it because we are joining the, the world, joining the world of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have a calmed heart, we start at 7 o'clock CST. Um, when you have a calmed heart, then we have a, a warning, really, which is verse 31, just a couple of verses away. And... وَلَوْ أَنَّ قُرْآنًا سُيِّرَتْ بِهِ الْجِبَالُ وَقُطِعَتْ بِهِ الْأَرْضِ أَوْ كُلِّ مَا بِهِ الْمَوْتَ بَلْ لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ جَمِيعًا Here's the one that I was looking at. Here's what I want to talk about. أَفَلَمْ يَيْأَسُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَهَادَ النَّاسِ لَهَادَ النَّاسِ الْجَمِيعًا وَلَا يَزَالُ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا تُصِيبُهُمْ بِمَا سَنَعُوا so that middle part uh, is, the, well, I'll just read the whole thing in English so you can know what it is. And if there were any Quran by which the mountains would be removed or the earth would be broken apart or the dead would be made to speak, it would be this. But to Allah belongs the affair entirely. Then those who have believed, 
yayasu, they despaired of what Allah had willed. He would have guided the people. Would he? He would have guided the people, all of them. And those who disbelieve do not cease to be struck for what they have done by calamity. This is a warning. This is a warning to us not to despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are connected to truth. Our hearts are calmed by dhikr. And we are called on not to despair of the hope and promise of Allah. In Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promise. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to make dua, asks, tell, promises Jannah for the believer. 35, same surah. And مثل الجنة التي وعد للمتقين وعد للمتقين, sorry. Jannah, the, the example of uh, paradise, which the righteous, those with taqwa have been promised. And it describes it. This is Ramadan. This is the month of taqwa. This is the month we are being taught to have taqwa. Through fasting and qiyam al-layl and sadaqah, we're being taught taqwa. And the, the, the reward of the ones who have taqwa is jannah. Tajri min tahti al-anhar. With the rivers flowing underneath. وكلها دائم وظلها. Its fruit and its shade are, lo- are long lasting. They're always there. Uh, that is the reward of the righteous. And those who disbelieve, their reward is hellfire. So there's a lot of clarity here, but a lot of emphasis on be people of taqwa. Be people of belief. Be of those who, who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the next surah in this section is three, is Surah Ibrahim. And Surah Ibrahim begins with, again, uh, talking to us about the Qur'an, telling us about the light of the Qur'an and the, the blessing of it. And again, this is Shahr al-Qur'an, the month of Qur'an. This is the month we should be holding on to the Qur'an and reading it. Alif Lam Ra kitabun anzalnahu ilayka li nasa min al-dhulumati ila nur this book has come down, has been revealed to take humanity and nas from darkness into light. From darkness into light. بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَى الصِّرَاطِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ By the permission of their Lord to the path that is aziz, that is amazing and mighty and wonderful and hamid, praiseworthy and joyous and glorified and beautiful and fantastic. Disbelievers, it's a, we study disbelievers in the first level Aqidah class and the second level Aqidah class in, at the Ribat Academic Institute. But just as a um, quick answer to that, the word uh, kafir means one who knows the truth and hides it means one who knows the truth and hides it it's like uh, it's like an agricultural word kafir kafir you put the seed in the ground and you can't see and so a kafir is someone who has the seed of belief but hides it keeps it under underneath doesn't show it okay so um you know the ahl kitab is a different category uh, believers who practice are one category believers who don't practice i subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everyone and knows everyone's level of practice. And he is reminding us in the Quran again and again. Be of those of taqwa. Now Allah SWT is telling us, for all people, be of those who come out of that darkness, darkness of hiding your faith, ila nur, into light. And the one who sees light never wants to go back into darkness. This is the truth of the world. This is the truth. The human being does not like darkness. We don't like to be in darkness. We like to be in light. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in this surah is going to uh, tell us about some people who are in error. It's interesting here that this particular verse is أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الضَّلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ These are people in extreme error. الَّذِينَ يَسْتَحِبُّونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى الْآخِرَةِ وَيَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجًا أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الضَّلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Those who Prefer the worldly life over the hereafter, this dunya, over the next life. 
and avert people, like try to stop people from walking on the straight path, the way to Allah. Trying to make that path look deviant. Ya Allah, how many people, subhanAllah, those are the people in great error, it says. Now, I, this is like the last group of people, in, in the United States at least, that it's okay to mock and discriminate against are people who are serious about religion. Like someone who wears a serious hijab, half of the people are like, oh, hashtag so religious. What's wrong with you? Why, why, is, your, why is all of your hair covered? Ya Allah, Ya Allah. It's, it, yeah, in this whole thing of people can, you know, people are free and people, that's fine, that's great. But why is it that it's okay? And this is not just for Muslims, by the way. Christians too, and Jews, people who are very religious are mocked, even within our own communities. Even in our own communities, people want to make us feel like we're praying too much, or we're just too much, or we have too much dua, or we're reading too much Quran, or we're not having enough fun, we don't have enough self-care, or we don't have enough, uh, I don't know what. No, sorry. Honey, we're adults. <laughs> we're all adults. And the one who chooses to love the dunya is their right. But if I or anyone has chosen to love the akhirah more than the dunya, it's also our right. And it's not I mean, I'm not this it's not extreme to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extremely. It's not extreme to fall in love with the Prophet. That's not being extreme. That's being that's being that's using our heart for what it's created for. And to think that we live in a world where that is the one group of people that are the most mocked now means we live in a world where shaitan is doing he's doing his work and he's succeeding absolutely and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this verse alladheena yastahibbuna alhayat ad-dunya 'ala al-akhirah those who love the world more than this this world more than the next life and Yasudduna an sabilila and and stop people on this path and that's what's happening if someone is if someone is saying oh, I really want to wear hijab and someone else says to them oh what are you going to do that for you don't want to look too religious what if you can't get a job la hawla wa quwwata illa billah what is that kind of talk encourage each other to good and khair encourage each other encourage 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 to goodness and we spread the love spread the love of Allah and give people the joy of the next life Okay, and uh, that that verse uh, goes on, but I want to make sure that I am able to answer the question that came earlier and then also finish up. I wanted to just say one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a really beautiful analogy in this surah, um, verse 27. And the analogy is just really amazing. And the tafsir of it is very beautiful as well. So the verse is 27, and it is, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ ظَالِمِينَ وَيَفَعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah keeps firm those who believe, يُثَبِّتْ keeps them firm and steady, with, uh, with the firm word, okay? This is بِقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ In world of life and in the hereafter. Now, this قول thabit is, there's a whole, a longer analogy here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, talking about uh, the one who has قول thabit and the one who, who doesn't. And if you just for, for time, Ibn Abbas talks about that. He says قول thabit, this, this short word, is the believer who has arms facing up to heaven feet rooted in aqidah and a and and the those who are uh, sorry this did i i did it i think in the wrong verse 32 two two more later where he's talking about shajara the tree okay mm. oh my glasses would help me i want to make sure that you're on the right yeah 26 i was on the right one i'm sorry 26. Yeah, oh, there it is. Okay. وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةُ خَبِيثَ That's the second one. So if you have to go before that to say كَلِمَةُ الطَّيِّبِ uh, That's 24. أَلَمْ تَرَكَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةُ الطَّيِّبِ 
كالشجرة طيبا أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء This is the verse I want to talk about Sorry uh, Have you not considered how Allah presents an example Making a good word So that goes back to what we said about كلمة الثابت His كلمة الطيبة Like a good tree Whose root is firmly fixed And its branch is high in the sky Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibn Abbas says that this is the believer This tree is the believer And the believer gives fruit And shades people People can live in the shelter and shade of the believer. And the believer nourishes others. We nourish the earth. We nourish the world. And, uh, and then the, and again, Allah says, uh, uh, it produces its fruit of all time by permission of its Lord. Allah presents examples as people pass will be reminded. And then, وَمَثَلَ كَلِيمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ كَشَجْرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ The example of a bad word is like a bad tree, uprooted from the earth, not having stability. And this is the example for the question before of the disbeliever. So the one who is whose roots are out of the ground and can no longer serve is disconnected from the core focus, the core of who we are. So let's all be a good tree with our arms, our branches outstretched to others. Our roots... Uh, deeply rooted into Islamic learning and our, our trunks strong and steady so that we can withstand any storm, including the storm we are in now, this pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong trees and beautiful believers who are bringing back the right really to be believers and the right to do that in a joyful way and a beautiful way and to do that together. Thank you very much. Okay, so what was the earlier question? I'm sorry, I forgot it. If you put it now, I will try to answer it. I think it was if somebody says something to you that you don't like, how do you respond to it? And what I will say to that is be a tree. Be a tree that is rooted in good manners. Respond. A, a dua to comfort their heart. That's what it was. Okay. Be a... Well, first I'll say that if somebody, oh, why was it hard to follow along? I apologize if I was confusing today. Um, if you are, if your heart is discomforted by something that someone has said to you, the first thing to do is to remember that the, the awliya tell us that every human being needs three things. We need someone who will guide us, someone who is our friend, and it's also good for us to have an enemy because an enemy tells us things that we don't want to hear, but sometimes there's some truth in them. So the first thing we want to do is if somebody says something to us that we don't like, is look for the truth in it. Look for the truth. Like if someone says you're fat or you've gained weight, okay, that hurts your feelings, but maybe it's true. Or maybe you need to think about your health. If somebody says you're selfish, maybe you've been really working hard to be generous, but maybe it's true. You do have some selfishness and it's time to think about that. So the first thing to do is have honesty with yourself. Go stand in front of that mirror and ask yourself, is any of this true? And the second thing to do is to remember that you say obnoxious things to people too. We always, we all do. We all say things to other people. I said something to somebody um, a couple months ago. I was so embarrassed. It was like, I was, I, I was, it just was embarrassing. And the person sent me an email and called me out on it. And I was like, alhamdulillah, you called me out on this because I didn't know how to come to you and tell you, I'm sorry, I said that weird thing. And so, I mean, the, the, um, you, we say, things, so if somebody says something to you, that's okay. Like, be, try your best to be forgiving. And the third thing is, uh, you're asked for a special dua, how do we calm our heart with dua? The best way to calm your heart with dua is a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad. That and others. That's the best way to calm your heart. So, inshallah. I'm sorry, Z, that it was hard to follow along today. Maybe I'm, uh, I maybe I wasn't that clear today. My apologies. Subhanallah. It is what it is, and I will try to do be clearer tomorrow. Inshallah. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and a beautiful fast breaking. If you haven't broken your fast yet, remember us in your du'a, and remember if you are benefiting from these lectures that this is part of the work that we do with Rabata, and we would really appreciate your support. We would love to have you as you all, everyone here, all of you as monthly donors at rabata.kindful.com. 
even $10 a month makes a difference. And by the way, there are special perks with being a monthly donor. You get a special uh, uh, message from me every once in a while, and you also get a discount at Daybreak Books. So you can go to robotid.kindful.com and become a monthly donor. We'll be so appreciative. Or you can also go to launchgood.com forward slash robota and join our campaign over there and help us to support the work of educating, uplifting, and growing Muslim women scholars so that we have these kinds of lives eventually 10, 15, 20 years from now for our daughters. They're gonna find, they're gonna be they're gonna be looking to see which woman shall I choose from to listen to. And even our sons, which woman will which women shall I learn from so I can grow and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please support us. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful evening. Remember me in your dua and remember all of us in your dua. Assalamu alaikum.